Welcome to a very special uh, free tutorials, uh, which I'm going to be providing uh, as part of preparation preceding the launch of the second edition of my book, Ghana Legal System and Legal Method, which I co-authored with uh, Nicholas Fredu Aquatin. So what I'm going to be doing in this uh, tutorial sessions is that I take a question or two from an aspect of the book and discuss that with students. Uh, the idea that students will also, excuse me, let me this passing by. Students will also benefit uh, from this tutorial so that as they get the book and then they read, whether they are learning for preparation towards the Ghana School of Law and Examination or they are working as a post-call students learning Ghana legal system or as a first year NLB student learning Ghana legal system, they will benefit in one way or the other. So the question we are looking at uh, this first tutorial uh, session uh, as part of the activities marking preparation towards the release of the second edition of uh, our book, Ghana Legal System and Legal Method. We have this question, describe the key characteristics of the civil law tradition. How does it differ from the common law tradition in terms of law and then the rule of judges? So this question is pretty straightforward, but it's a very good way to test students' uh, understanding of uh, this pertinent aspect of legal system. So we need to remember that uh, the civil law uh, tradition is a very uh, important uh, aspect or is a cornerstone of a lot of legal systems in Europe, Latin America, uh, parts of Asia and Africa. So the legal system in most of these uh, parts of the world are actually founded upon the civil law uh, tradition. And it is a tradition uh, which is characterized by its uh, unique sources of law, uh, the role judges play in that system, and also various uh, procedural approaches in terms of uh, the Taiwan law or uh, how to apply the law in contradistinction to substantive law. Uh, the civil law tradition is quite uh, unique in all those respects. Uh, on the other hand, if we look at the common law tradition, it is quite prevalent in the United States, United Kingdom, other countries of the British Commonwealth, and of course, uh, Ghana is very much uh, included in that. So if you had this as a question and you are providing a response, it would not be out of place to, for example, make the point that uh, you are seeking to explore the key characteristics of the civil law tradition and contrast it with the common law tradition. And you must have some uh, benchmarks or indicators which you are using to do the distinction or trying to do the contrast. So major points which will guide the sources of law. So in each of those traditions, where do we get the rules of law from? And also what is the rule of judges in either the civil law tradition or the common law tradition? So these are some of the things that uh, we have to be exploring. And of course, we also look at the implications of uh, the important differences between the civil law tradition and then the common law tradition for law practice and also development of legal systems around the world. So these are some of the things that in terms of introductory uh, remarks, we have to keep at the fore of our uh, mind as it were. In terms of origin and development, uh, the civil law tradition, as we know very well, originated in continental uh, uh, Europe 
and is heavily influenced by the Roman law, uh, particularly what they call the Corpus uh, Juris uh, Civilis of which was became popular during the reign of Emperor uh, Justin. Uh, so he famously commissioned what you call like the compilation by the jury consult, what we call the 12 tables. And out of that uh, emerged the corpus juris uh, chivalis. And the development of the civil law tradition uh, as uh, you know, made possible by Roman law has been a process like incremental. For that matter, around the Middle uh, Ages, we also saw our scholars at the time uh, develop it further by embarking upon massive codification and systematization of the law. So let us uh, keep that uh, in mind. Now, in terms of this historical foundation, we see an important contrast uh, with the common law tradition. Because the common law tradition, on the other hand, as we know, emerged from England and Wales. And it developed mainly from judicial decisions, customs and practices over centuries. So what we see is that, whereas in the civil law tradition, there was, as it were, a conscious effort. That is, you deliberately embark upon that you are going to produce or generate a particular uh, you know, system of law through quotes, you know, systematic statement of the law in a particular thematic area. So that is a civil law tradition. But then in the common law tradition, there was no conscious effort. The law emerged from practices of royal itinerant judges who were moving from community to community, trying to adjudicate uh, cases and ensure peace in the realm. So we should uh, keep that uh, in mind. So apart from the how they emerge in terms of sources of law, uh, it is another uh, you know, fundamental characteristics of this tradition. So if you tell like the several tradition, for example, in terms of sources of law, there's heavily dependence on written codes and statutes. So most of the rules which are applicable within the civil law tradition or legal systems founded upon the civil law tradition actually are located in written codes. And, and any time you hear a code, one thing you have to know, we are talking about codification. And codification uh, simply means that uh, a systematic attempt, you know, a systematic signature of the law in a well-organized uh, fashion to ensure people like logical coherence and all that, as far as particular uh, subject areas are concerned. So that is how we get the rules of law in a civil law uh, tradition. So various areas of the law, maybe like civil, maybe uh, you know, claims or commercial agreement, criminal or uh, procedural law and all that. We have quotes on all this and uh, the quotes are designed to be accessible and understandable to both legal professionals and then the, the public. So in terms of the sources of law, within the law, civil law tradition, there is heavy emphasis on legislative power to create and update laws. So you have more or less what you call like the top-down approach to legal regulation. So the lawmaker will have to uh, enact everything. And then that is how we get like the, the law. So let's keep that in mind. Now, if you contrast that with the common law tradition, in the common law tradition is something different. We have heavy uh, or greater emphasis on case law as a primary source of law. That is judge-made law, judicial precedents, stare decisis as a primary source of law. 
So legal principles and rules are derived from the decisions of judges in individual cases uh, with the doctrine of the you know, precedent or stare decisis, ensuring that similar cases are decided uh, similarly. Uh, and through that, a body of law is created over time. And so we see that in the common law uh, tradition, case law, judicial interpretation, that is how judges have interpreted even the few legislations that are there, they are very important. They are really germane to understanding and applying the law. So let's keep that in mind. And we should also remember that in trying to differentiate between civil law tradition and common law tradition, uh, one uh, indicator or one uh, you know, factor we can also pay attention to is the role of judges. Do judges play the same uh, role in those uh, traditions or the roles judges play are different? Well, in the civil law tradition, uh, the role judges uh, actually play can be, you know, judges are more of a, what you call investigators and adjudicators who apply the law to cases. And they have very limited uh, room for interpretation. So therefore, we say that in the civil law tradition, when it comes to dispute settlement, it is more of inquisitoria, right? Like inquisition. Inquisition, that is to say that the adjudicator is supposed to actively probe, you know, find out what really happened and so on and so forth. So uh, the judges are if you like, more involved in the uh, dispute settlement process rather than just uh, adopting a hands-off approach like in the common law uh, tradition. So let us keep that in mind. So the judge's role in the civil law tradition is to interpret the codes, you know, the various statutes which are there, and try to uh, find out uh, facts in the cases uh, and how the code should apply to them. So what that means is simply that a civil law judge has got less judicial discretion and is less likely to make a law through decisions. Yeah, so that is one thing we should keep in mind. On the other hand, if you come to the common law or traditional legal systems, which are based upon the common law, uh, you notice that judges play a more active role in shaping the law through their judgment. Because we've already noted that case law is a primary source of law as far as the common law uh, you know, tradition is concerned. And for that matter, common law judges contribute to development of legal uh, principles and doctrines through their interpretations and decisions, which also serve as precedent for future cases. So judges in the common law systems you know, have more room of uh, creativity and approaching the law in a very dynamic you know, way according to uh, how the legal process is. Now, finally, we may also want to compare and contrast common law tradition and civil law tradition in terms of methodology and legal reasoning. Now, if you look at the civil law tradition, uh, the methodology or the legal reasoning, which is quite dominant there, is what we call deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning, that is, you deduce. So judges uh, apply general principles from codes and statutes to specific facts of the case. Now, one thing about this deductive reasoning is that it is more abstract. 
it is more abstract and systematic, and it focuses on application of legal rules as written. On the other hand, if we look at the common law tradition, the dominant methodology or legal reason there is what we call induction or inductive reasoning. So in the civil law tradition, we said that they do what we call like deductive reasoning. But in the common law tradition, it's more of inductive reasoning. We judge is looking at the specific facts of a case and making a decision based on uh, precedence and analogy. And this offense involves a more detailed examination of prior cases to find uh, similarities 